My name is. My name is Obed Oboku Mensa, and I'm here to project Ghana to the world. First of all, I'll talk about the intro and the demographic background. Before the year 1992, Ghana has gone through a series of transformation. Ghana was from, formerly known as Gold Coast. And we gained our independence in the year 1957 from the Britain colony. Ghana is known as Gold Coast all because we have vast supply of gold and a market for gold exist, existed during the transatlantic slave trade era. The name Ghana is a title and it refers to a warrior or a battle chief. So from here we can see our map. Normally, people say our map looks like a sack, a sack for cocoa bean. I move on to the demographic background. Ghana is being covered with a land area of 2,033,535 2, square kilometers. And our capital is Accra. We have some ethnic groups in Ghana, whereby the Akans dominate. Administrative regions, the number is 16. Initially it was 10, but in 2017 we added 6 to it. In Ghana, Christians do dominate, making up 71.2%, Muslims 176 traditional 52 and the rest. The official language of Ghana is English. Aside English language, we have other languages, such as the Asante tree, we have the Ewe, we have the Fanti, the Bono, the Goba, and the rest. Currently, our population stands around 32 million. And the life expectancy for males is 68, and for women is 65, meaning Korea, Koreans live 20 years more than Ghanaians. The administrative district, we have 260. We have six metropolitan, 109 municipal, and 145 districts. The picture on the right is our coat of arms, which symbolizes the government official sanctions. We have four quarters, so I'll briefly explain it. We have one, two, three, four. The first quarter, we have the sword or the staff that represents the traditional leadership. The second quarter here represents a castle. That is the Osu castle. When you go to Osu castle, it's a, it's a prominent tourist site. That is it's represent the national Ghanaian government. The third quarter represents our culture with that is cacao, cocoa to be precise. The fourth one represents our mineral resources, and we have the black star that represents African unity. We have also the tawny eagles holding the shield. This award represents the order of star of Ghana. So if someone receives this particular award, he is deemed as the most important person in Ghana. I move on to the politics and governance. As Elias said, we've gone through a series of transformation right from the 12th century to now. So in the 12th century, it's believed the Akans emerged to set up Gold Coast. It's believed Akans came from the northern part of Africa. They went through Mali and they arrived in Togo and they got to the present Ghana. In 1482, Europeans set up post to trade gold. 1874, the British proclaimed coastal area as crown colony 
the late 1900 to mid 1900, slave trade began. In 1957, Ghana gained its independence through Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. 1960, Republic States status. 1966, Nkrumah was overthrown. 1969, Kofi Buzia was made president. 1972, Buzia was overthrown by a champion. 1978, a champion resigns and a Kufu takes over. 1979, a Kufu is deposed by Rawlings. 1979, Rawlings is made, hands power to Hillard Heman. 1981, Rawlings lost Lehman. 1992, where we started our democratic era where we elected President Flight Lieutenant Jerry Don Rawlings as our president. 2000, we elected John Ajekum Kofor. 2008, we had President Bills. Unfortunately, he died in 2012, so the vice, John Dramani Mahaba, took over. 2017, Ekufuado became the president, and 2020, he was retained and he's still, in, he's still our president. Our next election will be held in the year 2024. And the question is who wins power? Although we have about 10 political parties, Ghana has become like a two party system whereby MPP spends eight years and the NDC spends another eight years. MPP refers to the new patriotic party and the NDC is new democratic party. Another point of noticing is our national flag. We have the red, gold, and the green, and also the black star. Red rep representing the blood shed by our forefathers. The gold representing our mineral with green representing the rich culture, and the black star, that's representing Africa in general. Now let's move on to our economy. Based on data in 2020, our GDP was around 68.5 billion, whereby agriculture contributed 20.5, and the other sectors also did. The GDP per capita is 2,213 US dollars. As Elia said, our population is around 32 million, labor force 46.6. Our currency is CD, and the coin is referred to as the Pesua. We are partners, trade partners, we have the Asia, and we, have the, we also have the AFC, FTA. We have the whole of Africa, the headquarters is in Accra. We also have the World Trade Organization, ECOWAS. The main industry have mining, lumbering, lights, and the rest. And exports based on 2019 data, we had this money and the import, this amount is what we had. The population below poverty lies 30.5% on less than 3.2% per day, 23.4% in poverty, according to 2016 data. Let's move on to one important sector. I call sharp contributes to Ghana's development. And when it comes to Ghana, we are, the sector is divided into four sub, sub uh, is divided into four sub sectors. We have the crops, whereby cocoa is included. We have the livestock, we have the forestry, the logging, and the uh, fishing, or the fisheries. Our temperature ranges from 26.1 to 28.9 in places near the coast, and as high as 40 degrees Celsius in the north, northern part of Ghana. We have two rainy seasons in the south. That is normally occurs in March to July, and September to October, and one rainy season in the north. That is May to October. The total agricultural land is 136,000 square kilometers, in which 24.4 is under utilization. The current policy guarding agriculture in Ghana is investing in food and jobs. We have sub policies such as planning for food and jobs, planning for export, rural development, and the rest. I think the other time, Professor Wong asked me about cassava. Those, those, those who don't know cassava, this is the cassava. It's a staple food 
in my country. We move on to our cultural values. Ghanaians don't joke with our family system. We have the extended family and also the nuclear family system. Respect for the elderly, honor social conduct. In Ghana, age is not maturity, but it symbolizes life advancement. Let's take an example. Uh, I become rich than my brother. When we go for a meeting, you don't joke. You have to accord your, the brother needed respect. It doesn't matter whether the, 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 the elderly couldn't live life uh, well or he, he, he did. In Ghanaian setting, we say the elderly doesn't do wrong. It doesn't err. Let's take an example. Uh, my servant, let's go to say Professor Wong. We have an issue whereby it becomes known that the error is coming from Professor Wong. In the Ghanaian setting, it's not proper to say Professor Wong erred. But indirectly or the back door, you will just go and advise Prof uh, uh, sorry, Professor Shane that uh, you didn't do right. But in the Ghanaian setting, we don't say the elderly did something wrong, whether he was wrong or right. The content of the speech can determine one's ethnic state. For example, I'm coming from the eastern part of Ghana, and for my language, in every situation, I have to use please to the extent that if I'm even insult you, I have to use please. I can say me pachosi o yabua, meaning that please you have stop it. Excuse my language. So the content of a speech can determine where you are coming from. A true Ghanaian should be able to speak at least the three language. The most common language in Ghana is three. So when I meet my fellow Ghanaians here, we do speak the three. Ghanaians believe in deities. And for our music genre, we have the high life, Boga high life, the hip life, the pan logo, Afro beats, Azonto, and the rest. So I think Azonto is common to some people here. The, as Elia said, uh, our major staples are maize, cassava, and plantain. Unfortunately, our culture is diminishing all because of globalization. So we come to some picture gallery. We show some uh, Asian pictures. These, these, these elderly men are coming from the northern part of Ghana. This is the early cities of Ghana, whereby we had the uh, queen, queen, uh, queen of England or Britain as being part of our head, where we have Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah as our prime minister. This is the uh, nuclear family system. This, we, have, we call this one the bone shaker. This, uh, the ancient police, also portraying some parts of Ghana, Osu Castle. This picture talks about the early Ghanaian system, or early how Ghana came about, whereby the, the whites were trading with us, with us on the community gold. You have the independent square, our kinship system. Also, this picture is my servant, the family. I'm, I'm, I'm here. This is my father, my mother, and my two siblings. We move on to some heads of state. Currently, our head of state is President Anaya Kufuado, this man. So let me name them one after the other. This one is President Ankara. This one is Edward the Kufuado. That is the, the father. Uh, this, man, this man, that's the father. This one is Frederick Kufu, Dr. Kwame Nkuma, Efrifa, and Kutu Echampon. We have Flight Left Nandere John Rollins. We have Professor John Evans Ata Mills. As Elia said, the current president, Kufu Adon. We have John Dramani Mahama. We have John Adeku Kufu. We have Elani Man. So in Ghana, if you want to be a president, it's either you bear the name John. It's very common. Let's move on to some world personalities of Ghana descent. We have Boris Kujo, who's an actor. We have Professor Frimpong Mant uh, Boatin. He's the first black man to perform heart surgery in Germany, this man. We have Kofi Kingston, a wrestler, those who love, love wrestling. We have Oswald Boatin, a designer, popular designer. We have Marcel Desailly. He won the World Cup for France. We have Abid Yayu Pele. We have the movie star, 
Peter Mensa, we have Huge Kwashi, we have Asamoah Jan, we have Stephen Apia, we have, I think this man is also popular in the world, Dr. Kofi Annan, former UN Secretary, we have Peter Apia, Texan, a cardinal at the Catholic Church, we have Yabwatin, a politician in the UK, and we also have Idris Elba, so we have some new uh, movie stars who are from Ghana. Some tourist sites. So this is a picture of some tourist sites. Our identity. Something that is common in Ghana is either gold or cocoa. So traditionally, every fami family owns some, some gold or some cocoa. My, my family, we own cocoa. We have some uh, our fashion. This woman is my wife, myself, myself, and the other pictures are portraying some uh, fashion in Ghana. Culturally, we can, I can say this man owns Ghana. He is called Utufo Osetutu. Through him, through, the, through, through his tribe, that Ghana came into existence. So traditionally or culturally, it can be said that this man is the owner of Ghana. Mm. Agriculture, so we have some agriculture uh, items to portray. As Elias said, involved in fishing and, and the rest. As usual, these are some of our delicacies. This one we call it Banku. I think it's common in Nigeria too, Banku and Wuli. We call this one Ampesi, Kushia, and Awawaye. The meat is called Awawaye. Awawaye means tearing, tearing. This one is Fufu. This one is Ampesi, a local drink, a local drink, a tour in Kusia, Diwu. So all these are local delicacies. Sports is something Ghanaians don't joke with it at all. <laughs> so I'll, I'll come there. Nigerians will, will hear from me very soon. Ah. So uh, this is, this, I'll, I'll show this, this I'll, I'll, I'll explain this picture very soon. So when it comes to Olympic Games, you are there. World Cup qualify, we did something but I've lost recently. <laughs> Two times, uh, 2010, we represented Africa, but unfortunately, Asamoja missed the penalty. Azuma, Azuma Nelson, a world recognized boxer, the hockey and the rest. So I'll show a small video. This is how Ghana qualified for the World Cup. We beat a small team in West Africa, <laughs> a very small team. <laughs> unfortunately, the, the mic is not the mic. Okay. Is it a sabotage? Mm -hmm. the, is the, the, the volume is not coming. <laughs> so this is the goal that we scored to qualify for the World Cup. Uh -huh. right. uh. And they, 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 they equalized with a very dubious penalty. You can see for yourself. It's just a short video. You went there to beat them. I don't want to mention the name of the team. A small African country. So look, look at this dubious penalty they had. Just a small touch and they, they whistled like a, a penalty. <laughs> so if not for the VAR, I think the game would have continued. You'll get it. So I think we can move forward. Ah. So after they scored this goal, they thought they were going to score other goals. <laughs> Not knowing God is a Ghanaian. Yeah. They tried everything they could, but look at all these chances they missed. We even scored another goal, but they, 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 they disallowed it. After all these, he plays for a, a team in uh, this, how we trammed over that small African team. <laughs> so um, I'm still on sports. Ghana qualified for the World Cup and we're playing against Uruguay, Portugal, and 
my second country, South Korea. And that is how you are going to qualify. Portugal will beat us. I'll accept, I'll accept that one. You will beat Uruguay 2 0. And we will beat South Korea 4 0. That's how you're going to qualify. Thank you very much. Kamsabida, Madam Wasi.